my girls, got my man, got my fly shoes on Stepping out in my self-esteem No, I'm not a size three, but I'm still happy Don't listen to what haters say Just let my inner beauty shine all up in their face Girls, it's time to take a stand Don't realize it, but we got the power in our hands So all my girls around the world Raise your hands if you're a glamour show with this season we're taking it more deeper look i will always continue to do some celebrity stuff and things like that but i want to really talk about the core problems and really just get it out there so i really want to thank you guys so much for being on this episode so i'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves to everybody and tell them what you do and then we're going to dive right in i'll start with you i'm a a i uh i do life with people whatever that looks like to some so whether it's motivational speaking, whether it's coaching, whether it's business mentoring, whether it's mentoring, whether it's I just want to sit on the phone and yell and cry. We're going to sit on the phone and yell and cry. Um, I need someone to take me to the grocery store. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to take you to the grocery store. I need somebody to break my base so I can sew this weave in. I'm going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> right. We do life. <laughs> right. I do life with people. So, um, Radio personality, um, run a nonprofit, founder of a nonprofit, and also leadership and development consulting on corporate level. Awesome. Um, I go by Paris. Um, I used to be a radio personality as well. Started in 2008, um, ended 2016. Um, now I'm more so in the media world as far as blogging. Um, they call me a media enthusiast. I just found that out recently, something new. But um, I, I like topics that are intriguing to um, our community um, or that need to be talked about for our community. Um, I'm just doing a lot of research and educating myself so that way I can share um, information that's needed for us to discuss and evolve from. <laughs> Hello ladies, my name is Lillane French and I am the CEO and founder of Reflections of a Queen LLC, which is a personal development and career coaching service dedicated to empower, educate, and equip everyday women with tools to help them to live a life of purpose and positive self-discovery. Um, I think it's very important that we as women center on who we are first mm -hmm. and, and our values and what we want to do and getting in touch with what our purposes are. And I think once we do that, the real work starts. Mm -hmm. um, I learn, I, I see in this today's society is so many of us trying to get, obtain things outside of us, mm -hmm. but reflections of a queen mm -hmm. is more the inner work, mm -hmm. the reflection of it all. Mm -hmm. So let's start there first mm -hmm. and build upon the solid foundation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right, so hello, ladies. I am Marshawn Olanio. I am a life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the, like, the relationship that they dream about. And that relationship looks different for each person. So um, I'm also a speaker as well. And I will soon to be an author as well. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Hi, my name is Tanya McKenzie. I'm actually the founder of Sandy Shores PR firm. We work with speakers, authors, entrepreneurs, small businesses, helping them be able to tell their story so that people will get to know them, mm -hmm. like them, trust them, spend money with them. I'm a director uh, for on the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce. I was the first African American voted on their board of directors. Mm -hmm. So that means a lot in a community that doesn't have a lot of faces. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it also gives a voice to those that felt like they were left out of that economy mm -hmm. or that area. So outside of that, I am an author. I penned a memoir of um, some trauma that I went through as a child, gun violence. Mm -hmm. I am a youth advocate. I love the kids. I think many times we leave our youth out of the equation mm -hmm. when we look at things like economics mm -hmm. or businesses, even how businesses implement things that welcome the families and welcome kids. So I also advise companies on how they can better do that and I just 
try to be the best person that I can be mm -hmm. uh, for the community around me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a humanitarian, um, a black woman, a mother, uh, an advocate for those that just feel like they don't know how to say it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we learn how to do that together. So I am a, I'm a coach, post-trauma coach, because those voices are hard to find even in yourself. Mm -hmm. So I don't give them a voice. We, we find that voice to be able to say, you know what, it's not, what happened to me, right? It's who I am and how I get through that. Mm -hmm. right? so, well, thank, thank you, you guys so much. Um, for those who know me, John Randy J, I've been in the plus size industry for about nine years. And I started the, going into the industry because I got tired of how they view the curvy plus size women. And I wanted to show them that just because we are this size, that doesn't mean we don't like the finer things in life. We don't take care of ourselves. We don't love our bodies. Mm -hmm and we can be here and um, i'm a motivational speaker i talk to women about self-love body acceptance and the owner of lux curves magazine um, we're the only luxury publication for curvy plus size women so i started that three years ago now i see myself getting more into just anything i do has to be real and authentic not sugarcoating i talk about my own experiences with depression with domestic violence abuse with um to mental health and that's what I wanted to talk about on my show and just really talk about helping people mm -hmm. because everyone looks to TV and they look to these celebrities and these celebrities don't have it all together mm -hmm. and I just feel like our community and the younger generation sees that and thinks that's real right. when it's not mm -hmm. so um, in a nutshell I just see myself as a, just a trendsetter and just doing things differently I don't play by the book I never have and never will. And I think that's what, set, I know that's what sets me apart. So I just want to thank you guys for coming on the show and we're about to dive in. Right. So I have some questions, but we're, I, I want the conversation just to flow. So the first thing I want to discuss is colorism in our own community. Growing up, I was always told my dad was the milkman mm -hmm. because I was lighter than my siblings. And I felt like I got so much lack from darker skinned black women that it made me not even want to even deal mm -hmm. because I was just like I can't I didn't I didn't have a say so if I was like in my color but why do we do that why is it that oh you're darker you're lighter like why do we continue to do that to our community and our in our children to the fact that they hate their own skin color and I think we define it on a scale of acceptance when you look at society and what they call beautiful, if you Google right now and you type in beautiful woman, the average woman that's going to come up or appear is a Caucasian mm -hmm. woman, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You have to now be define a specific type, so black beautiful woman. And when you type in black beautiful woman, the fair skin, the Stacey Dashes, the mm -hmm. Lauren Londons, the even Kamora Lee Simmons, and I'm like, well, she ain't even all us, but okay, whatever the case may be, you know? From here, <clears throat> so I think what we have done in, I'm not gonna even say African-American, I'm gonna say African, because they're, they're dealing with it in Africa too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bleaching of the skin mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. trying to be accustomed to European standards. Mm -hmm. I think we created a sliding scale on what's accepted and what's not. But you don't think it goes back to slavery? Absolutely. I was going to say, Absolutely. Oh, yes. Because Absolutely. if you were the fair skin, you Absolutely. were in the house. In the house. If you were darker skin, you were in the field. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I just, I think it starts there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. The Europeans started it. There was a, a previous skill, and it's always been that way because those that are in power, in my opinion, have led that to be real for us. We didn't know who, what was what. Um, information was taken away from us, mm -hmm. going back to slavery. They didn't want us to read because that's where the truth was. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the Bible even, um, some things were taken out that referred to just us. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want that because if, they, if we knew, then we can overcome them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how it is today. We still don't know. I mean, some people are waking up, um, but it's a lot of us that are still lost. And we're still going along with what celebrities are doing what um, the government is allowing us to do, but we won't do the research to see what else we can do outside of what they tell us we can do. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I want to follow up on kind of what you said in regards to 
what we don't know. Mm -hmm. I think the problem, particularly now, is that we are not educating right. our young people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, it's funny that you had that experience because I had a pretty awful experience being a dark-skinned girl <laughs> in the Bay Area. Um, I liked a boy, he liked me, his parents wouldn't let him deal with me because mm -hmm. I was dark-skinned. He wound up dealing with another girl and she was light-skinned. So I grew up feeling mm -hmm. like right. lighter was better. Mm -hmm. right. But as I got older and I started to have experiences with light-skinned girls, white girls, mm -hmm. non-dark-skinned girls that had ugly issues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So they, they couldn't, they were complaining about their hair. They were feeling like the black community or even Latinos, um, if their skin wasn't dark enough, wasn't accepting them. Right. So my experience started to be witnessing and intaking the fact that light-skinned people were having self-esteem issues also. So then we start have to, we have to look at that and say it's not about what other people think of you. And even though we know that as grown mm -hmm. women, right. it's our job to teach our kids mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. Like right. we have to do a better job in educating them about what else is out there, mm -hmm. the other social issues that we have going through, and letting them know it has nothing to do with your skin color. Right. My daughter does not believe that there's anything wrong with her. She got a pimple, she got a scar up here, she thinks she hung the moon so because yeah. of her father. <laughs> she don't care. I'm looking at her like, can you go get that cocoa butter? But she was like, she I'm like, no, no honey, this is fabulous. <laughs> I'm great. But that's because we do, we are purposeful right. in the information that we give them mm -hmm. in regards to the greatness of all black people, yes. right? You got to see it from all angles. But right? not every household is run like that. No, it's not, but, yeah. but, yeah. but we play yeah. a role in that. Yeah. Yeah. You know this now, exactly. you know this now, and you know this. We all know this now. The hard part is making sure that we use what we have to continue to reach out to the community and the younger people. Maybe you don't know any young girls, but do you know some Somebody at the college mm -hmm. do you know do you encounter any young people mm -hmm. always letting them know they're beautiful mm -hmm. I noticed that too African-American women don't always compliment mm -hmm. each other right, it's right. so shady it's very shady. but it has to start from somewhere <laughs> right. and I think women like this we melt that ice yeah, when yeah. we sprinkle that out there For it sure. don't matter how shady they're acting how whatever hey how you doing good morning I speak to everybody and my daughter sees me do that right. so hopefully that's something that also lets her know it really doesn't matter what they look like right. what you look like as long as your attitude is what mm -hmm. it should be we're spreading love if people don't want to accept it that's not up to you you yeah, continue yeah. to be amazing right but I also think they know if once we get rid of those issues, the power we have together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I feel like once they see, okay, they're actually coming together, yep. mm -hmm. they're working, that's what they're afraid of. Yep. Of course. Because they know once we do that, everything changes. Everything, everything changes. Right. Everything yeah. changes. Yeah. You see it in politics right now. Yeah. You see it right now. So and I'm they fight now. really hard against it. And I don't care if I don't like anybody that's in government right now that's African American, you won't hear it come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I might not vote for them, right. <laughs> but you're not going to hear it come out of my mouth, especially to somebody else. Do you hear that from the Asian community? Do you hear it from any other community? Why would I do that? They're not doing that. So if we really want to make a change in that, because I think it's something that starts when we're young, mm -hmm. we're we that, yeah. have to start making that change now. For sure. And then it eventually seeps in. It's from the top down. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have to start sprinkling yeah, them with what we have. We deal, we deal with... The, we deal with <clears throat> we deal with a current culture that's so desensitized to beauty in self. They don't know it. Their definition of beauty is love and hip hop, yeah. Atlanta housewives. <laughs> and when you look at all of these, nothing against those ladies. Some of them I personally know. But here's the thing. When I tell you, when, when all you see is you have to alter your, your natural state of being to be welcomed or accepted, that's what our young girls and our young men are striving to. Our young men may not so much as cosmetic surgery, but behavior surgery. Mm -hmm. I may have been the guy with the good grades and that, but that's not what's getting the girls. So let me right, come sure. back up. Right. Let me go out and beat somebody up for no reason. Let me create this rap. Our young ladies. Yeah, my butt may not be as big as the other girls, but I, that's okay. I'm going to get butt injections. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pad my bras. I'm going to do... I look at how desensitized we 
become, even as an older generation, of what's accepted. Mm -hmm. We're scared to stand and correct. Young lady, you know you don't have to wear that. Here, let me give you my jacket, and let me tell you why I'm giving you my jacket. Because I want them to see this natural, beautiful face. You are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But if I can't see nothing but your headlights coming, if I see it, I know the brothers mm -hmm. see it, and that's all that they're willing to put on the forefront because I'm looking directly at your breasts. So it's, I think we have to start, when you say colorism is defining what, what is beautiful. Well, it's, it's all about self, it's all about acceptance. That, yeah, mm -hmm. just accepting each other mm -hmm. and each other's differences. But what I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of those psychological warfares. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, it could be you're natural. Mm -hmm. I would like to wear we put my hair. It could be you big, I'm small. You know, it's it's something. I think again, first, let's be real. We all have been there. Mm -hmm. We all have been there in some shape, form, or another. Mm -hmm. And we had to literally get our bootstraps together and get through that however, whether that was spiritual or whatever. You had to cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to literally detox your life, detox your mind. Because if you don't know who you are, somebody is going to tell, tell you who you, you are. Right. And they're going right. to tell you what to like and tell you how your behaviorism should be. So you need to really get clear. Right. And I stress this with my clients, I stress this with the teen youth I deal with, get clear about who you are. What is your voice? Because if you don't have a voice, I'm going to tell you what that voice is going to be. And that's what the teen youth are doing. Like, exactly. They tell you what you need to like, what you need to be, what exactly. you... Exactly. No one... Now I'm starting to see it more when... <clears throat> on social media as far as like the fakeness of the book, the butts and things like that and people That's saying you look ridiculous mm -hmm. and you know and i honestly like i tell people all the time like, i just post a picture and it was a photo shoot actually the owner did it in the and, window huh the window. in the window That's not it. and i <laughs> you know i did it and he and i said i do those things because i i, I told him don't edit me mm. because this is real mm -hmm. And I want women to, oh, she has dimples in her butt. She got cellulite. I got stretch marks. That's a real butt. This, but this is real. <laughs> right. And and there were some people who made comments on social media. You look disgusting. You should take you should take the picture down. And it was men. And I told them, I said, baby, you just don't love yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love me. And I said, me doing this, believe me, is not to get attention from a man, because I can get attention from a man in a hoodie and a sweatshirt right. and some yoga pants. Right. But I did this, I said, I do this to inspire women because I have so many women say, oh my God, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable, Sean. I said, yeah, when I wave, everything waves. <laughs> but how are you doing? It's a part of me. It, it's a part of me, but I think it goes with us just accepting us. Right. Because I don't want to look like a Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a new black woman, by the way. Is she? Um, I just want to. That's the idea. I don't agree with, that. don't agree with it I either, but that's the new idea. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. 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 Wait a you got to look like Kim Kardashian. You that that's the because I'm noticing they're taking the culture and they're shifting it. Mm -hmm. The the yeah, African American. Yeah, I know. But why is African American? Don't you be African, African American? But that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. First of all, y'all don't even have my same DNA strand. You're not even built for stuff like me. So here's my question: When we say things like that. <laughs> And we're talking about colorism. Who is def making? Who is defining this? And where are we at as mothers to say no. us, to not correct that before it gets that far? I'm just trying to understand is the ideal. She's the ideal black woman. To who? Are you? What, wait, wait, I, I really want to know because I was like, I was like, I was like, so here's the question when we I go back to even my youth because we're talking about youth okay. and how we get here 
When you were young, who did you look to and say was beautiful? For me, was, in my household, was my I was like, friend. it was my mother, it was uh, maybe Vanessa Williams because she was the first black, mm -hmm. um, USA. The black USA queen. Maybe it was definitely Anita Baker and her short hair. Yes. And Pat in the bed all day. Hi. So I, I'm just trying to find out where it's that media. when this was that media. Media. But they were it's but, media. but they were they were media though. But it but it media media that that that's well, cool. and who gives media the no. permission? Right. But it's different from this, this it's different. absolutely real. <laughs> it's it is real. it's real. It's a hard touchy subject. But, but it's, it's a real subject, but to me it's more like growing up I, in the 80s you we didn't have facebook twitter and we didn't have didn't. all of that mm -hmm. so in my household i have my parents playing anita baker patty labelle right. with the band all of that so to me i did identify that as beauty but then also being internally attacked by my family members mm -hmm. was like okay wait is it beauty or is it not beauty right so but for me now it's social media it our the younger generation is prone to so much more than what mm -hmm. we were prone to. Yeah. My kids don't even know what a pager is. They right. don't even know all these right. things. Mm -hmm. I know, baby. <laughs> that was the life on me. <laughs> The, the person, like you said, it really depends. I've always been a Grace Jones baby. I've loved that lady since a little girl because she was different. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with color yeah. until somebody pointed yeah. out, you know, she's like real black. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm black too. <laughs> you know, you're not as black as her. And in my little authentic brain, what do you mean? My mom's black, my dad's right. black. Right. I'm black, no, like her color black. No, because my crayon is black. <laughs> she's brown. Yeah. She's a darker brown, but she's not black. Yeah, right. Like the crayon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So as a kid, it's like, so I think that was something my mom really didn't have. This culture worry. and generation has shifted. Now I'm noticing the media is taking the essence of what it is to be a black mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. And they're putting it on a, a face that is not black mm -hmm. or it's mixed. Mm -hmm. And it's not an actual african-american woman mm -hmm. not to say that a, a mixed woman isn't african-american but we're not getting the real essence right. of what an african-american woman is we are very complex simplicity oh, yeah. Yeah. simple creatures right. it's a lot to us that we're they're not knowing the you you exactly. <laughs> this is you why we need more African Americans like you to get in places of media to infiltrate information. There's no excuse. We have social media now. Mm -hmm. Get the information out there because mm -hmm. right now the images of what is being put out there as a black woman isn't a black woman anymore. Yeah. Well, well, see, well, it's, 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 well, I'll say to your point. So when I first moved to San Diego almost a decade ago, I had a brother tell me that you probably will not find a black man because I have a friend that resembles Kim Kardashian, not the body, but the face. Mm -hmm. And he told me, that's what black men are looking for. Mm -hmm. And that came from a brother. And so mm -hmm. where do I fit? Because I don't look like her, like mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> like we completely different. And to your point, I actually grew up on the other side of that. So. I was called dark, all of the names that you can think mm -hmm. of, burnt in the oven, why you so black, da da da, right? And I remember an, a, a specific experience where me and my brother was walking home, and he's of a lighter skin tone, right? Mm -hmm. And the kids, they were walking behind us and just being mean, because kids, that's what mm -hmm. kids do, being cruel. And she was like, why are you so black? Mm -hmm. And why is your brother so light? Do y'all have the same mother and father? And so, well, I mean, what do I do with all of that? Yeah. And, and, and on top of that, at least my own personal I'm situation. Ask your daddy. <laughs> Here's that thing. That voice. Yeah, that voice that you know. talking about? I didn't have that voice oh, back yeah. then. Right. I was just right. like, yeah. 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 like, what we like, need like, you to be like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have that. But now I can clap back. But right. back yeah. then, I was just, I wanted to crawl under anywhere right. and, oh, and die. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, anyway. Fast forward with my dark skin, I couldn't get away from it because my siblings, they also teased me. Because, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't perfect, right. right? But they knew what to say to get me up off of them. So everything was black, black, or ugly, or whatever, right? And I didn't get my voice until I actually moved away from home when I joined the United States Navy at the age of 18. And nobody talked about how black I was. 
And the funny part about that is, me being black and me being ugly was not the same, right? Because I always heard black or whatever, but it was never like black plus ugly. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize any of that till I started to learn about who I was and take my voice back and just like, okay, well, guess what? There's nothing I can do about my damn skin. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, boy. So if you don't like this, then that is your issue. You don't like me. Right, and because okay. I'm, I'm so good with me. And I don't have a problem with uh, being approached or even me approaching. So here's just the thing. So me like, as a can color I is. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to talk about my experiences as a dark skinned African American woman. For me, it was more so in my community. It was like, well, you black, but you talk white. Mm -hmm. Why do you talk like a white girl? Mm -hmm. You black, but why are you so smart? Mm -hmm. You read books. Why do you read books? So as an African-American woman in my community, it was more so I had to survive. Now, where do I fit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do I fit? Because I love to read novels and I love to you know, listen Harry to Potter classical Potter. music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where yeah, do where I, do you I fit? Right, right. As a black woman who loves to play the violin and who loves the rural period of the classical, yeah. Who do I talk to? Mm -hmm. I can talk to so my what mom. Do we think of, what do we you think of okay, that being non-educated is black? Exactly. That's like yeah, surrounding. It, it's and because I was that, and I had that discussion with Lady A like well, a couple weeks ago, and I told her I said I stayed away from the black community because I was told you're too white. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was told you act too white, you talk too proper, you like this, you don't go here, you don't do this, and I said it's just because of what I like and what I don't like. And you didn't grow up in Southeast. No, I didn't. No, I grew up in South Bay, and like. I didn't have a say so where yeah, I was. We talked about that. Yeah. And I told you it's still no difference. Yeah. You know, up and, here's the thing. The best decision, me getting kicked out and, and going through what I went through as an adolescent and doing that, my mother at the only school that would accept me, it was deemed a white school. No, I graduated from Claremont High School. But at Claremont High School is where I found myself mm. because I had no Body else mm -hmm. to you know what I mean? Yo, it yeah. was I was the black girl, but it, they weren't like, oh yeah, the black girl. They were like, oh, you're, you're the black girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How you get your hair like that? And I'm like, I wet it. Right. <laughs> How you get your hair like that? Right. I flat iron, I blow dry, then I do, and I'm like, put a camera. But yeah. but it wasn't. I I had to learn then. It wasn't that they were trying to be offensive. Right. It was oh. Just keep it different yeah. from there. Well, so. In the black school, oh, I was I was big lip, big lip. Some I was shack because I had sideburns. My lips were big. Uh, from there, I got to that white school and had for the first time. I never had a white boy like really like me like. <laughs> I, I, Jake, I'll never forget him, Jake Tober. <laughs> My first black girlfriend, like my <laughs> real like, We went to homecoming and everything. And I, at first, I was embarrassed. I was like, I can't, I can't bring him over here to the. They're going to be like April, right? <laughs> and I asked him, I said, Jake, why did you like me so much? He said, You were the most. You were the prettiest girl I ever seen. He said, and I didn't know how to put it into words. He said, and he asked his mom one day, well, what is it? Because I don't want to offend her. And he knew they knew they were coming to meet my mom. And he said, even his mom, his mom thought I had the most exotic features. Wow. She's like, you just look like, you know how back in the day the Egyptian day, and she loved my I mean, his mom just highlighted what she loved. So I see how it transpired to Jake. And then when his dad came back from deployment, and his dad's like, oh, I want to meet the girlfriend, floor. Right. And I mean, literally, like, embrace it and there. And so he would be like, so, don't, who cares? They say your lips is big. Tell them I like them. And I'm That's like, right. yeah, I can't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you, right? And the thing was, it was the black boys. Who mm -hmm. I, yeah, uh. yeah, so then they saw me be treated a certain way. Then it was, well, why are you I going out right, 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 right. Are you, you you are out here? Right. I'm shat. Mm -hmm. I'm that. And then one day I had a good friend of mine who grew up same neighborhood, Carl, Carl Martin, in school, black boy, but he was light skinned. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what's funny? He said, the attention you're getting now. 
from all the homies then, he said they would not give you that until they seen someone else value you. Yes. But so, so now it's like, why do you out, of, out of our own, out of the culture, out of the yeah. race, value yeah. you? And because that happened to me, my ex husband is white, mm -hmm. together for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they saw us together, they're like, how did he get hurt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what? That's their impression. How, right. That's how their culture looks at it. did this happen? And, happen? Yeah, like. <laughs> nice happened. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, and I was just, you know. <laughs> well, girl, we don't know that all, because we don't, we don't. Right. <laughs> I told myself, I said, no, I need a black man who's culturally too different. So here's a, a, an eye-opening experience that I had with colorism, because I'm from San Jose, and they're, we're, 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 we're different. <laughs> multicultural San Jose was back then mm -hmm. uh, and I got the why do you talk so white um, and so I wanted to feel something different and I went to Grambling University my first semester mm -hmm. so I say that to say okay I didn't stay long I'm pretty spoiled California girl <laughs> and the bugs were too big <laughs> I was like you're like I can't do this yes, yes. Now. I was like I'm out we but ain't got no beaches no palm trees none of that <laughs> And I gained 20 pounds and I've only been here a week. Wow. And everything got great me on it. But there are so many different melanins mm -hmm. in the room. There were so many shades of black and brown and tan and yellow and whatever else you can come up with albinos mm -hmm. at a black college. That is not something you're going to get in California. No. Mm -mm. But with that, not only were there so many different shades, but the educators hmm. were not just black educators, but they were empowering and hmm. they were committed, super committed to you being successful. So with that experience, I was like, I'm all right. Like it, we are okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a whole other side of being black that I had not and would hmm. not have ever experienced hmm. had I not done that. And in that semester, you know, meeting up with other people from California, from Detroit, from various mm -hmm. different uh, parts of the state that have their own black experience to be able to share that and understand, you know what, we're all different, it's totally fine. And it's always gonna be the same. Light wanna be dark, mm -hmm. dark wanna be light, <laughs> curly wanna be straight. <laughs> and if you really start looking at how we are as women, um, even men do it. We always want what we don't have. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you look bomb in that ponytail. Like, I wish my ponytail laid down mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Or that natural hair that you're wearing, I wish I could do that. Can you teach me how to do that? Mm -hmm. Or it looks good on you, it might not look good on me. So versus Light skin. Each other, it's just all about just it's appreciating. appreciating. It's appreciating and letting them know you look amazing like that. I don't think I would look good like skin. Or I think you like that. Yeah. Can right. you teach me? Right. 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 Yeah. But, and that's why I just posted on my social media the other day. I said beauty comes in many forms, and there's no one, yes. nothing wrong with congratulating another woman on yes. her beauty without diminishing your own. Yes. Right. Yes. We are just because you different. don't yes. have what she has doesn't make you any less beautiful exactly. Exactly. but again it comes down to us being able to spread that message instead of allowing for situations like the Kim K or anybody else to define I'm so what on people are saying I am too I'm so over that because let's, let's her take, or, or anybody else for let's that take matter. away the money and right. the fame girl Probably. can you really survive take away the no. surgery and, and give her her own face back <laughs> Her whole face. Her real face. Her real face. Yeah. 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 He did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking around the yeah. table. Yeah. We all, all natural. Yeah. All and beautiful. Like, we got to tell, tell, tell the truth. It's okay to be like, that's not her. That's yeah. Not, right. Right. That ain't right. right. that. I'd be like, go learn hers. No. Right. I, you can I'd be like, her booty ain't moving. It ain't moving. This is how I feel when I look at those celebrities like that or people who have drastically altered their body. They don't I, I look at, here, here's who I look at and I and I'll say if I have the opportunity to just sit with her, I would tell her over and over again, I love you. Hmm. I love you. And that is 
uh, what's the little rapper that used to be with Biggie? Uh, little Cam. Cam. Lil Cam. I would tell her. Just over and over. That's all she needs to hear. But because she needs to I watch right. the transition. And here's the Man. thing. Man. She loves herself now because she's altered it to what in her mind everybody thought she should have been or thought she should have looked like. Rather than her understanding when you was big lip little Kim, dark skin. I love her. Yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 of that, you, you was just fine, honey. You just came up in that era where that it was hot to get them a Puerto Rican or a Mexican or a, you know, it was hot during that time. She just needed to hear that. And I look at now, she has this beautiful little baby girl. And her little girl like and the, uh, the recent picture is 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 dark skin because mm -hmm. the baby's dad is black. He's dark skin too. And I'm saying, my God, what is that conversation going to be right. like? And that baby right. starts to develop mm -hmm. and say, Mom, I don't, I don't look, I don't look like you. No, let me see so, your baby picture. And, and now let me home. change Every myself because I want to look just like my mommy. It's a toxic behavior that's mm. transpiring. I look at the, the the Kardashians, right? I look at, what's the mama's name? Chris. Chris, Chris right? You have Kylie and, and Kendall. Kendall, right? <laughs> Who have now, they, they've altered their body. No, not the, not the Kylie has. Yeah. Ki Kendall did not, right? Yeah. I, I applaud her for that. Yeah. She, she is who she is. She's like, I'm tall, I'm skinny. I'm gonna make the best ever. I'm gonna be a model, and that's just what I'm gonna do. <laughs> right? And you got Riley, who I wanna be like Kim. Yeah. She also like her Kim, and I wanna be like there. And the only other sister that didn't is the one with the Courtney. Courtney. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Courtney, yeah. like, look, yeah. Yeah. I'm a mama. I got stuff to do. I ain't got time to be on nobody's table. I even watching her on the show. I'm like, she is a little, she not with all the she hype not, like her sister. Not. It's like, look. When Kim was pregnant, oh my god, she was like, Kim, get over it, go throw up or just sit here. And I was like, busting up, like, did she just say that on that show? She said, go throw up or shut up. Right. right. Because yeah. every, because it's the reality that we all throw up, go to work, get up, do what we have to do. And that's what I'm saying, like, that's real. Put more on it. And I think it goes to what you were saying. You had to be put in an environment where did nobody care about color because we all black we here. <laughs> it wasn't presented as an option to, for it to be yeah. from there. I grew up in California. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Are you? Oh, yes. Okay. I was from born in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Raised in California. Went to college at HBCU. Shout out to Alabama a and University. Hey. <laughs> Go Bulldog. And that's what I'm saying. When because I was exposed to different avenues of life, I've lived everywhere. I, I truly tell you, I have no home base. I lived in San Jose, grew up partially in LA, grew up in San Diego, lived in Mississippi, traveled around and seen other parts of the world, been to spring break in Florida with my homegirl from college, went to Atlanta, and most people say the same thing. When I say, well, I was raised in California, you don't seem like you're from California. I get that all the time. No, you talk different, and I'm like, well, they call my mom country cat. Cause I don't care how long my mom be here, my mom is country. When she talk, I'm like, mom, what? I'm like, what? And I'm like, uh-uh, mom, say, say that slow. And, and pronunciate your words. You write that down. So I think it's more of, because born and raised in San Diego, been mm here -hmm. my whole life. And I think, I sometimes feel like it's more of a California thing. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or as far as, just dealing with things, but I know you grew up in the East Coast, girl, New York. I everywhere. I moved from New York. Oh, I lived in New York because I did off Broadway at, for a particular time, and even that's the story. But like you were saying, it's just a psychological warfare. Yeah, and I think it just goes back to really identifying. You're going to go through it. You have to go through it. But it's just equipping our young people, equipping each other with the tools we need mm -hmm. to get through. And I need you. Mm -hmm. We need each yeah. other. Yeah. So when you get a sister that's in that mindset trying to come to you, we got to shut it down. We have to be accountable to one another. Mm -hmm. And that's just mm -hmm. the reality of it. If we want to progress, we got to start telling each other the yes, truth. Right. Sis, I love you. I don't think that's the right way to think about this right. sister. Or have you thought about this? Have you had a conversation with her? Right. You know, let's push each other to reach that level of excellence that we know is within us. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, Mike, we gotta take a break. Right? Okay. Right. So we'll be right back. <laughs>
Well, with all the conversation, there's no way we can get this done in one episode. So we are going to have part two of the State of the Black Women Roundtable discussion. And it's going to, because we haven't touched on. Mm -hmm. Girl, we got one question. One question. Girl, one <laughs> question out. We haven't touched on the black man, the, you know, all this other things that I wanted us to touch on. So this just lets me know that we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. And we're going to do part two. So thank you guys so much for tuning in on this episode of the Brandy J Talk Show. Thank you so much for my guests. But we'll be having part two for the season three of the Brandy J Talk Show. Stay to the Black Woman Roundtable.